In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to mimic some of the video editing skills that are used in the introduction of NCIS Season 14. I have a subscriber who asked me how to create something like that, and the more I started looking at what they did, the more I realized there are a host of great skills that were involved in putting together that kind of introductory section. So what we're going to do is a short series showing you some of those skills or something like what I believe they did in order to create that introduction to NCIS, that American action drama series. Now if you'd like to see what it looks like, I'm not going to show it here because of copyright restrictions, but you can go on the internet and you can find any one of a number of places where you can see that. What I have done is I've created another video, 10 seconds long, that emulates a little bit of some of the main things that they did there. So for the next 10 seconds, please look at this example, which has nothing to do with guns in action, but a lot to do with pastries of all things. But you'll see how the technique is applied in general. The first thing I noted when I was looking at the NCIS production was that they had a character and an image that was slightly blurred and slightly grayed out. And so we're going to do that in this particular tutorial and then show you one other major thing that's part of the first two seconds of that intro. So I'm going to take this clip of the young man with the bread and here we have him on track number one. Now I want to make him fuzzy and I want to make him a little more grayish. So the way I'm going to do that, first of all, let's deal with the gray part. I'm going to click on the Fix Enhance button above the timeline and go to Color Adjustment. And then we'll take the saturation and dial it back. Not quite all the way, but pretty much so we don't have a lot of color. And if I hover over the letter, I see what I've done to it. The I, that tells me the adjustments I have made. The second thing I want to do is go into my effects room. I can press the F4 key or click on the FX in the upper left corner. I'm going to go to a blur, and your list may look different than mine, but I trust that most likely you have some form of blur effect. Take and drop it right on top of the clip. Now we've noticed the default is to blur it out way too much. To change that, I'm going to click on the Effect button above the timeline, and the degree is set to 5. I'm going to drag over the number and type in 1, the lowest blur. And so it's just slightly blurred. And that mimics more of what we see in the NCIS introduction. Now the next thing we want to work on is we need a grid. And so I pulled a grid off the internet, public domain, just kind of like a regular graph. It's not quite the shape that the NCIS uses, but it's good enough to illustrate it. And we'll drag the grid out and make it fit the length of the video. So they're going to match. Now I have a couple problems here. It's a blue grid and it only covers part of the screen. Let me show you how we're going to change some of that. I'm going to click on the grid, double click and get into my PIP designer. And then I'm going to lower the opacity of the grid so the color isn't quite as obvious. So we're going to go down a little bit and that's not too bad. Now if I want to tweak it a little bit more, I can also do the fix enhance, do the color adjustment and back down the, the saturation value to make it a little less bluish, it'll look a little more gray. So there is my very slim grid there. Now the other thing I need to do is I noticed if you look frame by frame in the NCIS introduction, it starts out with a grid in the center of the screen and you see part of it and then very quickly it expands to fill the screen. How can we make that happen? 
Well, clicking on that track number two grid again, I'm going to click on that and click on Designer and then go to Mask Designer. I want to use a mask, but I also want to keyframe the mask. So I'm going to click on a square and here I have my mask right in the middle. We'll take our playhead and we'll move it all the way to the beginning of the clip and set a position and scale value. And then I'm going to click on the minus button at the top. We're going to back out. We're going to zoom out. And when we start, we want it small. We're going to mask a small part of the grid, not the whole grid. And if I click, I will see pink lines when I'm right dead center. And there is where my grid starts. Now we're not actually expanding the grid. We're expanding the mask that shows the grid. And then I'm going to move over maybe about a second or so. Let's try something like that. And then we will enlarge the grid. We'll make it so it's bigger. And now it's full size. But there's something I forgot to do. I'm going to click on OK. I also need to take the grid in the PIP Designer, double click on it, and I want to, to make the grid in its full size bigger than the center of the screen. So again, I'll zoom out and then we'll make our grid a little bit larger so it covers the entire video clip. Click on OK. So this is the grid. Now let's go back to the beginning and see what happens when we try to play this. It starts out, you see the grid in the middle, and then it expands to fill the screen. Although the grid isn't moving, but the mask is enlarging. So that looks a little bit like some of what we see in the first few frames of the opening clip of the NCIS introduction. These are just a couple of the techniques that don't last more than a few seconds in the actual commercial video. But what we're going to do then is look at some of the next things that are done in those first few seconds to again see how we can apply techniques in PowerDirector in the next tutorial.